Now we're going to turn to uh, um, uh, a topic that's uh, uh, related to, uh, uh, to some things we've talked about earlier, and it gets at uh, um, physical health uh, for our kids, uh, an equally pressing problem that uh, schools and our culture is dealing with. Our presenter is uh, uh, my colleague, Trent Herter. Trent is a professor in the Department of Health, Sport, and Exercise Sciences at KU. He's the director of the Neuromechanics Laboratory, the Hawk Fitness Academy, which is a strength and conditioning program for youth that I think he started about seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, uh, and the Science and Fitness Integrated Technology uh, Fit Pro uh, Academy. Uh, uh, Dr. Herter is really uh, um, um, a quite sophisticated uh, scientist and quite renowned for his work. He has an extensive public. Do you like that? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to give the damn guy a raise now. I had that uh, extensive publication record. His, his research is focused on skeletal muscle function and how it's modified by pediatric physical activity, exercise, and aging in human subjects but he has developed a program for our students and it's quite remarkable. So Trent Herter. It's a little different presentation than I'm used to. Uh, when I'm done presenting at most conferences, we just start a two hour long argument about how to record a motor unit that typically ends with a bunch of F offs as Jody has piggyback on that joke earlier. So I'm a researcher, a neuromuscular researcher in pediatrics. We find, uh, Inactivity may produce an environment the muscle is not conducive for good physical performance and metabolic performance as they age. Uh, through that research, we use a lot of exercise interventions to test underlying mechanisms. Uh, with those experiences uh, with the children and the parents, kind of realize there's this gap in knowledge and skill development that could occur uh, in a child to help promote wellness and fitness. And thinking of how to best promote wellness and fitness in children, I thought the best approach would be via STEM education. Wellness and fitness is the intersection of physiology, physics, chemistry, mechanics. The majority of us in here have, are wearing watches technology to monitor physical activity, wellness, and fitness. I was, something, it, I was a little worried about how today would go. Uh, with the previous presentations, I, fit, I think this is fitting very nicely into what I'm hearing today, this morning. So I sought out to uh, build a platform to educate and develop skills and hopefully promote healthy habit choices in children. I wanted to be engaging, personalized and interactive. The figure, so I couldn't resist putting a figure up here with some data as a physiologist, but the top left, that is physical fitness levels in kids in the past you know, three or four or five decades. Cardiorespiratory fitness, you might not know what that term is. It's the best indicator of mortality and disability. So someone who has low cardiorespiratory fitness as a child is likely to have low cardiorespiratory fitness as an adult and will reach that disability stage much sooner than others who have high fitness levels. Certainly interventions can help uh, to increase fitness, cardiorespiratory fitness. So how can we help educate these children to want to maintain good fitness, improve fitness? And I thought via a platform might be the best way. So it's engaging. Uh, the proof of concept is up and running. It's engaging in the sense, in the sense that it was a comic book theme, graphic novel. You know, I want to draw their, their attention, uh, their user profile. They will be able to create their own avatar with objectives met on the platform. They'll be able to add on to their avatar. This avatar will populate the lessons. So the lessons they'll see, they will be seeing themselves in these lessons. The other huge uh, part of this, I think a lot of uh, individuals are excited about, their physiological data will be brought into their lessons. So you can see in the, uh, the middle, the bottom, the bottom middle there, you see the child's avatar that they created. And you probably can't see it so well, but I guess you can't on your screen, sorry. Those calories expended during that 60 minutes, that'll be based on their biometric data. So they'll start seeing uh, data presented real data about metabolism in that first lesson with physical activity. So when they consume, get to the lesson about dietary intake, they will see the calories of those foods and the nutrients of those foods. And then we'll use gamification. So this example here, they are gonna have to choose, they're, they're sitting for 60 minutes playing a video game. 
or they're sprinting for 60 minutes, they're gonna have to decide how many calories they're gonna be burning during those two activities. The other component of the platform is to really try to encourage healthy habits. So it's gonna be interactive. After this first physical activity lesson, uh, they're gonna learn about different levels of physical activity, why they should achieve 60 minutes of physical activity uh, per day. And then they're gonna get the opportunity to start recording that and tracking that. So on the platform, they will, they will select the physical activities that they'll do that day. The platform will communicate with them the next day to confirm that they did those activities and encourage a selection of activities that next day. And this could be done uh, for anything. We have a, um, uh, we're developing, uh, developing up for the marathon club, the after school run program in Lawrence, where they encourage the child to run 26 miles a year, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, that, that program, they give a piece of paper, they check you know, how many laps they make, by the end of the year, they get you know a, a gift or a treat or something like that for getting the 26 miles. Our approach is let's give them some content like why they should be doing this. What's the benefits of running these 26 miles? What's the implications for you know the physiology of running these 26 miles? How do you run? What do you use when you run? What do your muscles use? Also, we can start that conversation about the technology. A lot of them have technology to track running. So this platform for the marathon club, they will be able to get. Uh, a personalized content about the effectiveness of running or how it can improve wellness and fitness, but also be tracking it daily on the platform rather than a piece of paper, you know, handed to the, uh, the instructor for the after school program. I think, I think that's what I have for you guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Take any questions that you may have. And like I said, the proof of concept is up and running. Uh, we are definitely looking for funding to uh, build out all, all the other things that we discussed today. Uh, but if you guys have any interest at all, uh, let me know and I can register you on the platform and you can start looking at some of the content that's been built. Thank you. Questions uh, for, for Trent, for Dr. Herter. Is there a focus to involve families? Because we know that involving families, especially young children who get active and involving families in that piece and that component can play a factor. Uh, what's the proof of concept for involving families or the guidelines that you're using? Certainly that, that should be considered for the platform. It can be considered if, if, if the school district would want that aspect. The family unit is, plays a big part in wellness and fitness. We definitely know that. Uh, so there's no question that involving the parents and having them be included on the platform is probably a good thing. It should probably happen because we do know if the family unit participates together, they're better, you know, they're more likely to um, meet these, you know, be physically active. You also know that when, when Trent was building this, he was uh, looking at the uh, state standards around science and, and the like. So that that's, that's kind of built into the platform uh, as well. Other um, questions over here. I'm has, not going to cut you off now, I promise. Thank you. Has research shown that a physical education program should be more about um, seeing the fun in having physical movement, or should they be more in producing, um, what's that, like, not the, kind of the inverse of that? Like, should physical, should it be fun and a way to just, like, have an experience outside of the classroom, or should it be an encouragement to um, include more of that literacy and understanding of physical activity in the classroom? I don't know if I can completely answer that question. Uh, what I see is we for sure need a component of that physical education and skill development. So when they leave the elementary school or middle school, uh, they can walk into uh, a weight room or um, a gym and understand things they can do that are most effective in maintaining cardiorespiratory fitness. I think working with the parents and children, uh, one of the things that comes up is not necessarily knowing the most effective way to improve or maintain fitness. And we, oft we often think like you have to go to the, this, this weight room for hours at a time to get stronger. And that's just simply not true. You don't need a barbell to get stronger. Um, so the platform is really going to uh, increase knowledge in their skill set of, of really simple things that can be done uh, to maintain all systems. So I think getting back to your question, Having fun certainly would be, be nice if you had fun while you were exercising, but also there should be some skill development, just understanding like what actually has to be done uh, to improve or maintain uh, fitness levels. 
We got a question over here, Sherry, over there. And was there a question online, Jeannie? Was there, no? Yeah. Oh, that's loud. All right, yeah, I just had a question on, so besides running, um, do you have other platforms for different types of physical activities? We're, we're, we're open. I'm seeking um, uh, individuals to collaborate with. Uh, certainly we want um, exercise. Uh, we want a, a courses directed towards exercise to teach kids about exercise. Uh, some other things we've thought about is, you know, like Hy-Vee does this, they give you this box, this wellness box for your kids. Any, any of you guys done that? They give you this box. It got some worksheets in there to promote healthy eating. There's no way why that can't be incorporated onto the platform and give them digital content, let them track and log the foods that they're eating digitally. So I'm definitely open to collaborations for anything you guys might be thinking that's health related. There's another one. One more. Yeah. I'm a Lawrence parent. I've walked that track at seven o'clock in the morning. I understand what your program is. Is there any plan at focusing on, I'm now a teacher at the, for the at most at risk kids who are not there at seven o'clock in the morning for your program? Yeah, there, I think that's this would be perfect for them because they don't have to go to the track. They can track this via the online program. So they can do this and they're doing it now. I think a lot of the marathon club uh, participants aren't necessarily doing it at the school anymore. Uh, this would be content to be able to deliver to them uh, while they're not at school performing that after school program, quote unquote after school program. Well, thanks uh, to Trent for that. He's posed two questions for us. And so uh, what we're going to do now is go ahead and uh, uh, let you, uh, you all here get uh, with your groups again and discuss these questions. And uh, we'll put the online uh, participants into their break group. So 10 minutes for that discussion. Let's thank Trent for the presentation.